Hey gang, how's it going? Welcome back to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for painting with me today. In today's video, we're actually gonna do something a little non-animal, it's actually human, but we're gonna do this painting called Walk in the Rain. And with this painting today, you're gonna to get um, some good comfort level with two different types of brush strokes, and you're gonna be using a full range of colors. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. If you wanna switch out any colors, I encourage you to do that with this painting, make it your own. So what you're gonna see in this, uh, in this video and in the description box below, there's a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit is everything that you need for this particular painting. So check that out, gather the supplies that you need. Another thing that you're gonna see in this video is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for you to get that initial image, that initial figure on your canvas or your panel before you even start painting. So check the links out. Check out the video on how to transfer your traceable to your canvas or your panel, and it just helps you get that initial composition on there and takes away some of the stressful beginning steps um, of painting. And for those of you that are painting for the first time or are beginner painters, these are good tools to utilize so that way you can jump right into painting and kind of get a little bit more comfortable with it. With that being said, as you paint today, as you paint with any of my videos, I don't want you to take yourself too seriously. I want you to relax and have fun. If you happen to get uh, a little sloppy and paint outside the lines, that's okay, that's good. Because by doing that, you're actually getting more comfortable with your tools, figuring out what you are capable of with those tools and getting better with them. So again, this is just practice. This is just for fun. Turn on some music, get your adult beverage if you are of age, but just relax and have fun. And you will notice that while you're painting, you're gonna forget that the rest of the world's out there for an hour or two. And that's really kind of why we all paint is to just escape the world. So find yours, relax with it, have fun. So enough talking. Let's go ahead and jump into painting and get started. All right, guys, so head on over to where you have your painting station set up. Hopefully you got all your supplies together. Make sure you turn on your favorite music. Uh, like always, make sure you take your progress pictures so you can look back on your progress. And with this particular painting today, we are going to do something a little bit different from the other ones that are on my channel. Um, you can still use your tra uh, traceable. So we're gonna start with our light colors. So you wanna grab some white, pull it aside, add a little touch of yellow. So we're kind of going for a kind of a light lemony yellow. And we're gonna put our horizon line in. And this is gonna be basically everything above will be the sky and the park lights and the, um, the rain. And then the bottom below this line is gonna be the pavement. So we're gonna do two different brush strokes um, above and below the line. So when you're working below the line today, I want you to kind of keep these long horizontal brush strokes kind of to give the illusion that we've got, you know, this kind of nice flat ground that the rain is um, falling on. So below this horizon line, we're taking that light lemony yellow color and just kind of surrounding the figure and surrounding um, kind of the little underneath area of our horizon line and kind of carrying it down. With any of the paintings that I teach, if you like one color more than another, if you wanna change the colors on here, please, you have full permission to do that. And if you change the colors and kind of go off the grid, send me a picture. I like to see what you guys do. So we're still taking that kind of light lemony yellow color and laying a pretty good base around this figure. And now that we're going above this horizon line, I want you to make little X marks with your brush strokes. Um, just, we also call this kind of cross hatching, but just little back and forth brush strokes. So that way we have a difference from where the rain is falling compared to the pavement where the rain is hitting the ground. And it's good kind of just practicing these brush strokes. And again, with this light lemony yellow color, if you have to make your color again and maybe there's a little more yellow in it, don't, don't stress about getting the exact shade every time you mix your color. 
but we're taking this brush stroke, this X marks brush stroke in this color, and we're surrounding our figure with the umbrella, kind of almost giving her an aura. And we're starting with our lighter colors, our light warm colors, and we're going to work towards our dark colors, kind of building on the color prior. And if you are painting for the first time and you feel like you're holding your breath right now, please take a deep breath. You may not realize it until you get called out or uh, get a little short of breath, but relax. This is just painting. There's no right or wrong way to paint. Just the fact that you showed up and you're applying paint to a canvas or a panel or something, that's half the battle. All right, so pause the video here and take your progress picture. And we're going to move into more of the direct or the straight yellow. And we're going to be surrounding and kind of building on this shape that we just made. So again, when you're below that horizon line, keep your brush strokes kind of long and horizontal. And you will be overlapping your lighter color. You will be overlapping that light yellow. And where the two colors meet, you may realize that they kind of blend together. So kind of play with that. This is a really good place to kind of get comfortable with mixing your gradients and blending colors and just kind of experiment. And as you can see here, I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on the brush. The more you push your brush against the canvas or the panel, the more your texture, the more the brush strokes will actually show up. Again, something else to just play with. And if you have the texture of the canvas kind of showing through, um, I'm going to encourage you to actually apply your paint a little bit thicker. You'll realize that you have a bit more of um, a nice uh, texture to kind of blend with and mix with. So again, here we're moving above that horizon line, moving back to those X marks brush strokes or cross hatching. And again, just building on top of the prior color. And if you do have anything that stressed you out today, this week, this month, put it into the painting. It is a really good stress reliever to just kind of slap paint on canvas. And before you know it, uh, an hour or two will go by and then you look at your painting and hopefully you're quite proud of what you created. All right, so another progress photo here. And again, we're starting from our warm colors, light and moving to darker. So now you're gonna actually just take a little bit of orange and you can mix it right on top of the pile that you were mixing that white and yellow. If you have to make it fresh, just start with your white, add some yellow and then add just a touch of orange. We're going for kind of a sherberty orange color. And when it zooms back to the other angle, it'll be a little bit easier for you to see that color. And again, below that horizon line, long horizontal brush strokes, overlapping the prior color, play with your blending. Um, if you want to really get into the blending, you can add a touch of water to your brush. You never want your brush dripping wet with water, but a little bit of water on the brush will help the fluidity of the paint and help you kind of blend the two colors. If you're feeling super adventurous, Try finger painting. Try blending with your fingers. It's uh, very, very therapeutic and quite fun. And this is just acrylic paint, so it washes off with soap and water. Again, with this color, as you move above that horizon line, move back to those uh, X marks, those cross hatching brush strokes. All right, you're doing good. Starting to fill up the space. And right now you're kind of an abstract painter, kind of anything goes. What's going to define this composition is when we get to the outline of our figure walking in the rain. Oh, we're going to be doing some editing. Again, if you have to make your color again, don't stress about getting the exact shade, having some variety especially in this painting, is to your benefit. 
All right, so pause the video, take one of your progress pictures. We're gonna be using some more uh, straight orange or direct orange now. And again, continuing that glow from the figure. And as you can see on the video, I do keep mixing the colors kind of on the same pile. So that way I'm always grabbing from the color I was just using. It's kind of a good way to do your step down gradients, starting with the lighter color and we're working our way into the darker. So just some tools, habits to kind of pick up and it makes it kind of fun for when you're blending your colors. Nice, and you'll see as you overlap these two shades, you can add more, add less. Um, before we move into the figure, after we've got the background filled in, if there's anything that you want to do to your background, pause the video, readjust, go back to any of these colors, um, even try layering, on, layering them on a couple of times. But again, just permission to make this your painting. And this is a fun painting to do a couple of times. Invite a bunch of friends over, break out the paints, turn on the music, break out the wine, or the margaritas, or whatever your <laughs> uh, extracurricular of choice happens to be. And everybody's got one. All right, so still adding more orange, moving above that horizon line, making these little X marks, uh, even kind of overlapping into some of those lighter colors. So again, you'll uh, trust your instincts. And if you feel like placing a color in a place that I don't put it, put it in yours. This is yours to just listen to and communicate with the canvas. And just check in. Are you holding your breath? Take a deep breath, relax, smile at your painting, pause the video, take a progress photo. All right, more just even straight orange. If you've already been using uh, a good amount of orange in your mixture, go ahead and just move into the next step and start adding some red to this mixture. So we'll be moving into more of a burnt orange or swap this out for another color that you like. And if you happen to be painting on a stretched canvas, uh, when you reach the edges of your canvas, if you wanna carry that color over the sides, over the left, the right, the top and the bottom where the canvas wraps around, it does look nice when you hang them on the wall to have that color wrap around the edge. So just another option for you. And even with this kind of red orange, you do see where I'm kind of overlapping some of the areas where I'd already placed some colors. Feel free to do that. If you don't like this kind of burnt orange, um, you can move the video forward and see where you start moving into the cool colors or switch this color out for your color of choice. But you're doing good. I hope you're having a nice time. I really do get a joy out of uh, sharing with people kind of the, the ease and the joy of painting. We make it out to be something that's so difficult and it's only difficult because you don't do it. So the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it. It's not so difficult. And then we have all those places where we push ourselves to get better or to just use it as a therapeutic outlet. Both are great. All right, it's going to be kind of interesting, uh, the progress pictures from taking this one with all the warm colors, and then when we move into the cool colors, how that changes, how it feels. So another reason to kind of look back at your progress photos. All right, perfect place to take a progress photo. And now we're just going to put some direct red, straight red. You can skip this step if this is not a color you like or if you've already kind of used a lot of red in your prior mixture, maybe move in, add some purple, or just move ahead to the next step. <laughs> just doing good. 
And again, as I'm overlapping these colors, I'm not using a whole lot of pressure, so I'm kind of playing with that blending. Uh, you can even play with maybe using light pressure uh, below this horizon line to kind of keep it kind of smooth, and then maybe use really heavy texture above the horizon line where you're making those X marks. Just kind of see how that feels. All right, so take a progress picture. We're gonna move in, you're gonna clean your brush really good, and we're gonna move into purple paint. If you jumped right in and didn't clean your brush, that's okay, because the red and the purple make for a really pretty warm purple. And again, just kind of filling up the space, overlapping the prior color, placing this color where you want it. Again, feel free to apply your paint a little bit thicker if you're having, if it's um, drying at a rather fast rate and you're not able to blend, apply it a little thicker and you get more workability, more work time with it. Uh, option if this purple is too dark for you, you can always add some blue, add some white, change it to what you want. Alright, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and you do want to clean your brush really good. You don't want any of your warm colors as we make our, in, you don't want any of your warm colors in the brush as you make your cool colors, because you might end up with some green instead of blue. Alright, so again, we're the remaining space we're going to be filling in with shades of blue, light blue, maybe a little bit of purple. Again, you can make any color that you want to fill in this remaining space. Just kind of keep consistent with the brush strokes that you've been making above that horizon line and the brush strokes you've been making below the horizon line. And even here, you can see where I do overlap some of the warm areas that we painted. My paint's already dry. So again, feel free to add some colors, step away from your painting, look at it from a distance, and assess what you want for it and you can go back to any of the colors that we've used and play with your background I like this painting because it uses just about all the colors except for brown all right take your progress photo so we're going to mix some yellow and green. Again, completely your discretion, how much yellow, how much green, if you even want to use this color. And if you are using student grade paint, especially with this green, um, I use Chroma Acrylics. They are really similar to the basics, uh, Liquitex basics that I recommend. But if you're using this or one of your colors happens to be kind of thin, just apply it a little bit thicker and use less pressure on your brush and you'll get a slightly more opaque coverage. If you feel like moving up to the student grade or uh, not student grade, the artist grade soft body acrylics, they are a little bit more expensive but they're going to have a nice opaque coverage and a really good um, soft buttery base to work with. So as you realize that you get more and more involved and in wanting to paint uh, slowly work your way up to some nicer grade paints and just kind of see what you like about them. All right, so even taking a little bit more yellow green. I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom um, on our pavement area because this would be kind of a reflection since there's so much water from this rainy day. And it's almost like you can imagine that those are the trees, the leaves being reflected on the ground. All right, so I took a little bit of that purple, just mixed it right on top of the light blue I was using earlier. 
Kind of gives a nice indigo, deep indigo color, but just as needed. And I'll be filling in the remaining canvas space with this color. And there's a few places that I can still see some whites of the canvas, so you can grab any color, add it to that, overlap some of these colors. And then again, we're going to go back to the bottom, and again, our sidewalk is wet, so water is reflective of the colors that are around it. And keeping those long horizontal brush strokes, it's giving the illusion that we've got these areas of water on our sidewalk. Even though sitting really close, it probably just looks like lines. But when you finish this and step away from the painting and look at it from that distance, your eye is going to put it all together. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're using the small flat brush. You can even move down to that small pointy brush. And we're going to kind of repeat uh, some of the colors that we made for the background and put it inside the lady. So we're going to that white and yellow with a little bit of orange, that kind of sherbet color. And as we make our brush strokes here, you can kind of stick with that cross hatching, those X marks, or you can make little dots. And what you're going to be doing is kind of ob observing the shape that I make here. Your shapes can be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, doesn't really matter, but just kind of keep them in the general area that you are observing. And the more that you paint, the more your power of observation uh, intensifies and you learn to see different things. All right, so take your progress video, progress, take your progress photo. You're going to go a little bit darker. So that same mixture you made, just add a little bit more orange. And again, we're putting it in select areas on the umbrella in her dress. All right, so moving a little bit darker, add a little bit of red to the mixture you were making. And feel free to adjust. It can be kind of that mauve color, or you can go a little bit darker. You can add more pigment instead of white. Add more color instead of white. just more red and again just building on top of that color and again you can swap these colors out for anything that you want if you want to give her a different color dress if you want to give her a solid black dress and skip this step you can do that and keep going don't judge the look of the painting until we're done that white of that canvas kind of fights your interpretation and when we get to even doing the black outline, it's amazing how much that defines our composition. So learning not to judge yourself while you're in the middle of painting is a big part of the process. So be kind to yourself. You're almost done. You're doing really good. And hopefully for the time frame that you have been painting this, you maybe forgot about some of your stresses, forgot that the world's out there, and just have relaxed. All right, so take your progress photo. 
You're going to clean your brush really good. We're going to go to our light blue and we're still going to be adding into our umbrella and the dress. And again, you're just kind of filling in some of the remaining canvas space. You can use a few different colors. You can overlap some other ones. The black outline that we do will, uh, like I said earlier, define the composition. And breathe and relax. You're doing good. So get in with more of that straight blue. Darker blue, you can even substitute this for purple. Kind of mimicking that shape of the umbrella. All right, another progress photo here. We're going to take some white, tiny bit of red. And make kind of a light peach so we can make the legs and the legs are kind of a pointy triangle with the point being the feet at the bottom you see that i started at kind of each edge and then filled it in and there are a million different shapes to legs out there so don't feel like yours has to be perfect they're all unique so we're going to add a little bit more red to that mixture and you're going to put it just kind of a little shadow value on that left side and kind of down the center. So it gives an illusion that we have a shadow on that left side of the leg and a shadow separating the two legs. And just keep it really simple. All right, take another progress photo. All right, so we're going to move into black paint and small pointy brush. And we're going to kind of fill in the remaining canvas space of the dress and the arms. So I'm kind of outlining it here right now, but then I'll move to the little dots as I kind of fill in the space. And we're going to outline the umbrella as well. And as we do this step, this is where it really starts to kind of come together very quickly. And kind of brings shape to the composition. Nice. And if you need to steady your hand, you can see where I put my pinky out and use that as kind of a pivot point. Or you can rest your forearm against the table. The more that you work and practice with the brushes, the more comfortable those types of lines will become. You can always add a little bit of water to your black paint. That helps with the fluidity. And if you do get super frustrated and don't want to do these outlines with the paintbrush, let the paint dry and you can use a Sharpie marker and just go right on top of it. So there's always a way, always a way to make something happen. And if you're holding your breath right now, definitely take a deep breath. We think it helps to hold our breath. We think we can hold the brush steady. Learn to breathe while you're painting. And Bob Ross definitely coined it right. Happy accidents should you drop your brush, make a wrong mark, do something different, work it into the painting. Most of art is just learning to work with the tools and the things that you have in front of you. So here we're doing the kind of the spokes on the umbrella. And they do have that little bit of that arc, that curve to them. And you can start at the edge of the umbrella or you can start in the center or you can try both. And then we're also going to give her shoes. So it's almost like a diamond shape at the base of that triangle. And you'll see it when it flips to the other direction or the other camera angle. And then you also kind of want to give a shadow right underneath those shoes. And it's just kind of like a little zigzag. 
Doesn't have to be perfect. It can be kind of choppy, but moving straight down from the heels. If you want to give your lady some boots, feel free to change your shoes. If you want to give her red shoes, if you want to decorate them, go for it. All right, so pause the video. We're going to make some light blue. And again, we're just using light pressure, small pointy brush, these long horizontal brush strokes. And again, this is kind of the light reflecting on the pavement at, as this lady's walking on the path. If some of your brush strokes are kind of thick, some are thin, don't stress about that. You will get more comfortable the more that you practice. And add this to the other side as well. Alright, it's looking good. And I'm actually going to move into the white. Add a few little highlights on the umbrella. And again, this is just kind of places that the light would be reflecting. Catching the highlight, catching the rain. And then these are kind of uh, the openings where her elbows and her dress are. If you didn't leave space for them like I did, um, you can apply that white, kind of bring that opening back out. If your paint is still wet, maybe you let that black dry before you do this step. And still just adding a few more highlights. You guys have done a great job. Hey guys, I hope your walk in the rain paintings turned out really awesome. Please tag me as you're uploading these to social media. Tag me at Paint with Lovejoy. I really want to see how you guys are growing, what you're painting, how you're evolving, how you changed colors. Basically, I just like to see my students work and see that you guys are having a good time. So please tag me in those. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. Check out my prior videos. Leave feedback and comments on future videos that you'd like me to produce. And keep painting. The more that you paint, the better you get at it. And the more kind of stress relieving uh, avenues you have for your life. So keep painting. You get better. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to paint with me and watch this video. I do look forward to painting with you in the future. So cheers. Have a great day.